Hyperloop is an ultra-high-speed underground public transportation system in which passengers are transported at 600 plus miles per hour within a vacuum-sealed tunnel. Whereas Loop is used for shorter intracity routes, Hyperloop will be used for longer intercity routes. Sounds interesting, right? So make sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Let's dive into it. If you can't go around it, go under it. That is the basic premise of the Tesla founder's boring company and its plans for the autonomous high-speed tunnel system known as Loop to tackle Los Angeles' traffic woes. After Elon Musk got stuck in traffic in December 2016, he tweeted saying it was driving him nuts and he was going to build a tunnel boring machine and just start digging. This is the watershed moment that leads to the birth of the boring company. Largely financed by Musk himself, the Boring Company hopes to one day enable travel between New York and Washington, D.C. in under 30 minutes. The terminus is a long way off, though, and numerous technological and political obstacles will have to be overcome if the firm's ambitions are to reach their end. The latter category in particular should not be underestimated. Well, tunnels are traditionally extremely expensive to dig, sometimes costing as much as $1 billion per mile. For a loop tunnel network to be viable, tunneling costs would need to be 10 times cheaper. The Boring Company has several ways of doing this. By placing vehicles of stabilized electric skates, the tunnel diameter can be reduced to under 14 feet. Halving the diameter would reduce tunneling costs by 3 to 4 times. Secondly, tunnel boring machines are incredibly slow. They're 14 times slower than a snail, according to the Boring Company. They hope to produce machines that can go for longer while reinforcing the tunnel at the same time, all with less human supervision. This is a pressing need to innovate technology that has been stagnant for decades. Each station would consist of a bank of elevators. These can be as small as a parking space, so unlike a subway, an unlimited number of stations can be built along the tunnel route. Their latest challenge is to obtain planning permission from Culver City. A staff report released by the Culver City Manager's Office earlier this week revealed details of the firm's plans. The Boring Company has proposed a privately funded human transportation tunnel that would run underneath the west side of Los Angeles. The proposed route is from Hawthorne to West LA, the report reads. Permission would provide a crucial win for the planned six-and-a-half-mile proof-of-process tunnel. This human transportation tunnel would provide the infrastructure for Musk's innovative loop technology. This is not to be confused with Hyperloop, which involves human-bearing pods traveling through a vacuum, but is a significant stride in this direction. So you must be wondering, why tunnels? Benefits of tunneling include unlimited capacity. There is no practical limit to how many layers of tunnels can be built, so any current or future capacity outcome can be achieved. This flexibility contrasts with a surface system, where adding a lane to the road is often difficult. Minimal land use, tunnels minimize the use of valuable surface land. Tunnels also don't conflict with current operating transportation systems, such as roads and sidewalks. Minimal surface impact, Tunnel construction and operation do not create any discernible surface noise or vibration. Tunnel construction and operation are invisible, silent, and undetectable. Weatherproof operation. Rain, snow, wind, and surface temperatures do not affect system operation. When you consider the prospect of people being propelled in tubes across the Earth's surface at near supersonic speeds, several questions instinctively jump to mind. Perhaps the first is the impact of a potential break or breach in one of the tubes, possibly as the result of an earthquake or external impact. It is thought that a sudden influx of air into one of the tubes would simply slow the pods due to their increased air resistance. The pods could then be directed to the next portal via an auxiliary power boost. There is also the ability to section off parts of the route and to repressurize sections where significant emergencies occur and all the pods are expected to be fitted with emergency exits. Externally, Hyperloop systems will largely travel on elevated seismically designed pylons that can move and flex independently of one another, minimizing damage in the event of a major ground shift. Sensors along the route would instantly report issues to the system's control center. In answering the natural safety concerns raised, Hyperloop also points out that millions of people already travel at high speeds in metal tubes every time they take a flight, and that numerous concerns surrounded the use of jet aircraft when the mode of transportation first came to prevalence. While the idea of Hyperloop may seem far-fetched, when you consider the industrial progress made in the past 200 years, the current rate of technology adoption in our societies, and the significant advances being made by Hyperloop companies around the world, this incredible new transportation system looks set to become a part of our everyday lives very shortly. Well, that's it for today's video. So guys, comment down below and mention which part of the video was your favorite one. Also, what do you think about it? Let us know in the comments section. And don't forget to drop your suggestions for our next video. We would be happy to know it.
If you liked this video, then don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to Smart Sense, and hit the bell icon to get notified first. Also, share this video with your pals. See you soon in the next video. Till then, take care and stay safe. Keep watching our videos.